Hello there and welcome back to my channel. In Google Calendar, you can create an appointment schedule page for free that can be shared with families and colleagues to sign up for specific time slots, which means you can use this feature to schedule conferences, plan meetings, classified conference room meetings, and even allow students to choose presentation dates. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through how to create an appointment schedule page using Google Calendar. So grab your computer and get ready to follow along. A couple of quick notes before we jump into it. First, you will need to access Google Calendar from a browser as opposed to the app. The Google Calendar app will allow you to create events and tasks, but not appointment schedules. So I recommend using a computer and accessing Google Calendar from an internet browser such as Google Chrome by going to calendar.google.com. Second, some of the features I will be showing you in this video are considered premium features. Now, if you have a Google Workspace account or Google One Premium, you have access to these features. Most likely, if you are using an account from a school or district, that would be a Google Workspace account and you would have access to these features. But if you have a personal Google account, you can create a single booking page at no charge, but you're not gonna have access to some of the premium features, such as automatic email reminders for people that book an appointment with you, or cross-checking various calendars. Let's jump into the tutorial. With Google Calendar open, we're gonna click the Create button in the top left, and then we're gonna select Appointment Schedule. The first thing we're gonna do is type a title. Keep in mind, this title will be visible to anyone who has the link to your booking page, and it will be displayed on your calendar. For this example, we're gonna create a conference sign-up appointment schedule. So I'm gonna title it Mrs. Emerson's Winter Conferences. Next, we're gonna choose the appointment duration. So where it says one hour, you can click and choose from any of these drop-down options or select custom and type in a specific duration of time. But keep in mind, the minimum is at least five minutes but if you wanted to make it six or seven minutes, you can do so. For this example, I'm just gonna choose 30 minutes because that's a pretty standard amount of time for a conference. Next, you are gonna choose the availability. Now, this is gonna be the date and time that your appointment schedule is created for. If this is something that will repeat weekly, such as, times that you have available to meet with other staff members. For example, when I was my school's e-coach, I could have created an appointment schedule to communicate to the rest of the staff when they could come to me with questions. If that's the case, I would leave it on repeat weekly and select the dates and times that match my schedule. However, for a one-time occurring event such as conferences, I'm gonna click the drop-down and choose does not repeat. From here, I can select the date as well as the time frame. So we're going to select maybe January 5th, and let's say conferences start at 9 a.m. and wrap up at 4 p.m. Now keep in mind, unlike Sign Up Genius, which if you miss my tutorial on Sign Up Genius, I will have that linked for you in the description box. With the appointment schedule on Google Calendar, you're not able to go in and manipulate the times by deleting certain timeframes. If you are wanting to block off a certain time frame, you would need to create the timeframes around the time you're wanting to block off. So let me show you what I mean by that. Let's say from noon to 1 p.m., I'm gonna have a lunch break. Rather than having it go all the way from nine to four, I'm gonna have the first time slot be from nine to noon, and then I'm gonna click the plus sign to add another time period. I have the same date, but now I'm gonna select 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. You can create as many of these different time periods as you need to in order to block off times. You can also add additional dates. So if your conferences span multiple days, you can click add a date and add in those additional time frames. You also can adjust the time zone. Now, personally, I am in Texas. We are in central time, so I'm good to go there. 
there. Next, we are gonna adjust the scheduling window. So I'm gonna click the drop down, and you will notice that I can allow people to sign up on my appointment schedule a certain number of days in advance. This is a really handy feature because you could create your conference sign up, share the link with families, but not give them access until a certain number of days beforehand in order to make it fair and accessible for everyone. So maybe I want to allow them two weeks to sign up. I can change six to 14 and then I also have a cutoff time so if I need let's say two days to prepare for conferences then I want to cut off the sign up about 48 hours in advance so I can change this four to say 48. Now, if you don't need to utilize either of those features, there is a little checkbox that you can toggle on or off depending on your needs. Next, we are going to adjust the booked appointment settings by clicking the down arrow. This is where I can add in buffer time. So rather than having my conferences run back to back to back, I could add in a little bit of a break for myself, but keep in mind this is going to apply to every single time slot. So for example, if I add in five minutes of buffer time, it's not going to only put it in between the conferences that I select, it's gonna put it in between every single time slot. So if I want to add in a buffer time of five minutes, I can select that and it's going to automatically adjust those time slots available. You can also put a maximum number of bookings per day. This may not apply to something like a conference sign up, but if you are gonna create a weekly schedule, maybe you don't wanna max out any more than two or three meetings per week, you can put a cap on that allowance. Next, we can choose which calendars it will check for availability. This is a premium feature. Feature, but if you click the drop down, it's going to automatically check your primary Google Calendar. So whichever one that is for you, that one is going to automatically be checked because that is where it's going to place your appointment schedule. But if you have additional calendars, you can select them, toggle them on or off, depending on whether you want Google to cross-reference them. But for this example, I don't need to worry about that. The last thing I'm gonna do is select a color. If you choose the drop down, you have those standard Google colors. I'll go ahead and leave it this kind of pink maroon color, which matches that Google Calendar, and I'm gonna click Next. From here, I can see what my booking photo and name will be. So if I click the drop down, it's gonna match my Google account. This is a great chance to just make sure that that's all up to date, but most likely you don't need to make any changes there. Next, I have the location and conferencing. This is how I will communicate with people signing up where and how we're going to meet. So if I click the drop down, if it's going to be a virtual conference, I could select Google Meet and it would automatically generate a link for each appointment booked. Or if it's gonna be an in-person meeting, I can type in a location. So for this example, I'm gonna type Miss Emerson's classroom and I could put the room number. So room number one, two, three. Next, I have the description. So in this spot, I might wanna put any information that would be pertinent to family signing up. For example, if I want anyone signing up for a conference to fill out a Google form, that way I know what they wanna discuss in the conference, I could put the link to that Google form right here in the description. The information you type here will show up on the booking page as well as the confirmation email that they receive. So this is a great place to put any information in terms of what families may need to bring to the conference, questions that you wanna discuss, or links to other websites such as a Google form. Now we have the booking form, which we can go in and customize. So if I click the drop down, it automatically wants to prompt them to enter their first name, last name, and email address. In most cases, that might be all that you need, but for something like a conference, I probably also want them to enter the student's name because a lot of times the student's name may not always match the person signing up, and sometimes it can get confusing to know who the conference is for. My name is Andy Bernard. Andrew Bernard, that's my name. So I'm gonna click add an item and I'm going to click the drop down, choose custom, and I'm gonna type student name and I want to require this. So everyone signing up has to enter that in, click add item, and I could continue that to add in custom entries if needed. Then if I scroll down, I have booking confirmation and reminders. 
So it's automatically going to generate a calendar invitation. I'm not able to toggle that off, but as a premium feature, I can also have it automatically send an email reminder and I can choose the frequency and when I want that email reminder to go out. So personally, I would love to have an email reminder one day before. I could add an additional one that goes out maybe two or three days before, but for now, this will do. I'm gonna click save. Now keep in mind, even once you create that appointment schedule, you can go in and make changes. You will see it on your calendar. All you have to do is click the pen and it will bring back up that same window so you can go in and edit it as needed. From here, if you click on that appointment schedule on your calendar, you can either open the booking page for just that appointment schedule or you can see all your booking pages. I'm gonna open that up just so you can see what it looks like. Once you click, you will see a list of all of those different appointment pages you have generated. From here, you can click up at the top to see what others see. Sometimes that's helpful just so that you can see exactly what parents or families or colleagues would see as they are signing up. Now we're gonna go back to that initial page. In order to open up that booking, we can click on it. And I wanna share this because it confused me at first too. And if you fall into the same trap, I can see where it would be a little misleading. If I go to Mrs. Emerson's Winter Conferences, the appointment page I just created, even if I navigate to January 5th, it says there's no availability. If you remember back, I put the cutoff for 14 days. So currently it's not showing those appointments because I created a cutoff that was too far in advance. So we're gonna go back and edit it so that we can be able to view those appointments. So I'm gonna navigate back to Google Calendar. I'm gonna click the pen icon and under the scheduling window, I'm gonna change it back to 60 days. Click next, save. And now if we go back to that booking page, we can navigate to January 5th and we can see those appointment schedule options that we created. Now, this is a great time for you to pre-book any conferences that maybe you've discussed with a family and you wanna make sure that they get the time slot that's gonna work best for them. You can actually click on one of these options and go ahead and enter in that person's name. So for example, let's say William Emerson and we'll use the Emerson's 2020 at Gmail and this is gonna be for Billy. I can go ahead and book that appointment for that parent using their information. Now, if you're wondering how to actually share this with families, it works just like sharing almost any other Google file. You can click the share button in the top right corner. From here, you can choose to share all of your booking pages, which if that's what you wanna do, you would select all appointment schedules or just a single booking page such as this conference page. I can select a single booking page, make sure that the correct one is selected, and then it's as easy as copying that link and sharing it with families. You can also access this directly from Google Calendar. So in Google Calendar, if you open up that appointment schedule, you can click share and it will open up that same window. Also, similar to what I've shown you in other videos, you can also embed this on a website. So you could then share this out on a Google site that maybe you've created for your class or grade level. Also, one last thing I did wanna point out, as people book appointments within that schedule, you will notice those specific ones show up as events on your calendar. So now, I not only have the appointment schedules here on Friday, you'll notice the little grid icon in between the time and the name, but I also have the individual event for that parent or family or colleague that signed up. So I know that I have an appointment booked from 9 to 9.30 and I can see the name of the person that booked it, their email, and then I can also see the student name there as well. Now, another way you can utilize this feature outside of just conferences is to actually allow students to sign up for presentation dates. So maybe your students have been working on a project and you're gonna have them share during certain class periods. You can create a sign up to show them what offerings there are and they can go on and choose their date and time. It doesn't have to just be for a short period of time. You could actually have this span the entire year and maybe each week a different student is going to sign up to be able to share something. So really quickly, I want to just walk you through the steps of how you would do that. So just like before in Google Calendar, we're gonna click create and then appointment schedule. We can give it a name. So let's call it weekly student sharing. 
and each one is gonna be for a 15 minute time slot. It's going to repeat weekly, and maybe we're only gonna do it on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I can go ahead and take off Tuesday, take off Thursday, then we can set the time frame. So maybe this is something we're gonna do in class right at the beginning of the day. So I can have it run from eight to, let's say 8.30 will be their time. And then if I want to go ahead and copy that onto the other days, I can click the copy and it will automatically update the other dates with those same timeframes. Once again, I can select that scheduling window. Most likely, I wanna turn off the maximum time in advance because if I'm gonna run this all year, then I want my students to be able to sign up at any time. And let's do minimum time before. We'll do at least 24 hours. So they have to sign up at least a day in advance. And then I can change a date's availability. So if I click on that, let's say on January the 1st, if we're gonna be off school, I can go ahead and cancel out that time frame to eliminate students for signing up for that date. So you can take your school calendar, go in and mark off any dates that are not going to work. Not ever, not now, not then, not now, not ever, ever. Then just like before, I could edit my booked appointment settings. I don't need any buffer time and maximum number of bookings per day, we're just gonna do one. Even though I had it for 15 minute time frames and I had it from eight to 8.30, theoretically two students could sign up, but maybe I only wanna have one student per day. So I could limit that to one. I can select the calendars and the color just like before, click next. I already know my booking photo and name are good to go. Location, we're gonna select in person, Mrs. Emerson's classroom, and that's room one, two, three. In the description, I could let them know what they need to be able to present. So whether it's them sharing something from home or sharing a quote or something from a book that they've read, I can give them all of the directions there. In the booking form, I have their name, first, last email. Maybe I want them also to add in, like if it's a book, the book title. That way I know in advance what they're gonna be sharing. I can require that, click add item. I have the booking confirmation. They don't need an email reminder. I will be their reminder. So I can turn that off, click save, and then I am good to go. That is it. That is how you create an appointment schedule using Google Calendar. As I mentioned, even with a free personal Google account, you can still create a single booking page at no charge. You're just not gonna have access to every single feature. Also, this is a fantastic way to create those conference signups, plan meetings with your coworkers, and allow students to sign up for specific time slots. If you are interested in more things Google Calendar, I do have a full Google Calendar tutorial video as well as some Google Calendar hacks. So I will leave the links to both of those videos down in the description box for you. Also, you might wanna check out my Sign Up Genius tutorial video if you're looking for another option to be able to create conference signups. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. I'd love to have you keep coming back to my channel. As always, thank you for watching. I love you so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one.